man, my room looks always so dark. It doesn't matter how many lights. I've got like one, two, three, four, five lights on and it still looks pretty dark, but we're gonna work with it. I hope people can hear me. I know I had audio issues last time, so fingers crossed, we're good. So this might be a bit of a long one. Let me push this back just a tiny little bit and drop my phone. So these are, let's not drop this, all the empties. <laughs> I wasn't kidding when I said I really like actually couldn't close the drawer that I use for my empties drawer. So we've got a lot of stuff here, a lot of skincare, we've got a lot of hair care and a lot of makeup. I've actually finished uh, like a couple of foundations and concealers just recently because as you can tell, um, I'm trying to go through the stuff that doesn't match me that well. So like this foundation is like three or four shades too dark for me. <laughs> but you know, if anything, this is definitely the time to pan. This is definitely the time to get to know your collection a bit more if you don't already and to finish up some products. So we've got a ton here. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly start pulling out and organizing them. I wanted to get that cute shot with the uh, with the basket. So that's why I didn't sort this out before. That is my excuse because <laughs> I always find myself, even when I'm filming in these videos, I always end up um, in some way, shape or form having to sort through this like during filming. Brooke's here. Hi, Brooke. Ah, oh, yay. I'm so happy. I hope more people can join. I did that. Um, that's makeup. That's makeup. I did the, uh, Bag. I did a poll on the community tab. Thank you to everyone who voted because um, I said what time would be best to do this because I wanted more people to be able to join and they said six o'clock EST is one of the best times. So here we are. Uh, Brooke said your hair and makeup look really nice. Thank you. Pan that palette. I dug into the deeper purpley shades from my pan that palette. Uh, my face is kind of the same. I actually do Saturday's video is a collab and I show you kind of basic, like my basic um, base routine. So that's what I've been using. And then this video is not up yet. This video will be up Friday. I got this in my Tri Beauty box. It's a lip plumper. It's not really plumping though. It's more like a gloss, but it's not the best, but it's not the worst. That's, that's what I'll learn. <laughs> Ooh, and this, this is definitely skincare heavy. I've got a ton of skincare in here. Concealer down. <laughs> All right, we've got makeup. Oh, well, that just fell to the ground. All right, I think I've pulled all of the skincare. Let's see, are you skincare? You are a skincare. All right. There we go. Okay, we got a lot of skincare here. Let's try to do this in some kind of order, maybe, possibly. Uh, so let's start with this face wash. It's the face wash I use just all the time, morning and night. This is the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser for normal to dry skin. I have combo skin and it's just the best, most affordable face wash. It makes me feel clean. It takes off, um, I always have like eyeliner or mascara left on my face. So this takes off everything that I have left on my face after I've already taken off my makeup. And I think the best thing is that it's affordable because this is probably one of the things that I repurchase the most. So it's effective. It's super gentle. It's really good. And I love it. So I think this is, I, I can't even count how many times I've like rebought this. It's just really good. And I love that it's value size. Again, this is affordable. I normally buy them from Target. That's where I see it the cheapest, like in this kind of big bottle of the pump. Uh, yeah, awesome. And Brooke says, love CeraVe. Honestly, CeraVe is so good, especially if you have um, sensitive skin. I don't have super sensitive skin, but uh, it works so well. I've seen people across the board love that face wash. All right, so we've got face wash. Let's go to this micellar water. This wasn't like my all time favorite. I think my favorite micellar water was from CeraVe too, but I have not been able to find that in stores. And of course I have not been going, I haven't left my house in a month, so I'm not out shopping. 
Uh, so I kind of been using just whatever makeup remover I have at the house. And this is from Garnier. This is the Garnier Skin Active Water Rose Micellar Cleaning Water. So this one was just okay. I feel like it was a small bottle. How much does it have? 13 and a half fluid ounces. So there wasn't a whole lot in here. It's definitely smaller than the other bottles that I like to get for makeup remover. Just because I do wear makeup every day. <laughs> I know for some people that's a bit much. But uh, I wear makeup. Even when I'm working from home, I'm wearing makeup for my video calls and every day I have to take it off. And then on the weekends I'm filming. So I am wearing makeup every day. So this wasn't like my all time favorite, but it was effective. I do wear a lot of eye makeup and it did get everything off. Brooks said, I have that micellar water. I like that it's not greasy. You're right. That is a really good point. This one, the CeraVe one, and there's one more that the texture is just really good. Like it takes everything off, but it doesn't feel oily or greasy. And I do of course wash my face after I take my makeup off, but there are some times where, like if, I don't know, if your skin's irritated and you really don't wanna go with your full skincare routine, you could get away with just taking your makeup off of this and it wouldn't feel like gross. <laughs> Not that I do it that often or at all, <laughs> but th the option is there. I do know some people, in their skincare routines like to in the morning not wash their face and just use like a micellar water or something to just kind of clean off whatever might have gotten there overnight and um then do like all their major skincare at night i haven't done that i like washing my face in the morning because i take my showers in the morning so i like washing my face in the morning when i'm in the shower but yeah it's pretty decent to my cellar water. I do think Garnier, I think this was a bit pricey. I forgot the exact price of it, but I do think it was a bit pricey and it's not my all time favorite, but effective. Ba -doop. Let's see, I got bottles from there. Let's go to toner. So I have the Thayer's toner like everyone else on Instagram and YouTube. I, I've tried a bunch of different toners and this, rose one i like the scent of the rose the best there's one more i think it's a lavender one that's also really nice i just like that this is really gentle but it still feels effective like when i use this toner after i wash my face i can feel it's i don't want to say tightening it's a little tightening but like just enough to make me feel like it's doing something to my face before i go in with like my uh serums and everything but it's not enough that it really dries me out which is what i like about it it's also pretty affordable i like the size of the bottle it's got 12 fluid ounces which for toner is quite a lot i do use this morning and night and i actually have another one downstairs that's open and almost empty so i'm actually about to run out of this <laughs> so uh i might just stop using toner soon because I'm, I'm trying my best to not buy anything that is not a hundred percent necessary especially during this time. So uh, I might try to make my toner. I don't know, I might look up some DIY recipes and try to make a toner, who knows. But uh, I really do like this. I've gotten, I can't even count. I think at least five bottles of this and I do like it. I also, this is something really tiny. I love the, the bottle cap. So you see it's like the screw top so you could open it if you want. But if you open it up, it's got just a little spigot right here, which is just like the perfect size for like getting onto a cotton round, which I don't feel like is really thought about a lot by other brands. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. To do, what should we talk about? Uh, I'm dropping everything. Uh, let's talk about this. This is the Mario Badescu Skincare Facial Spray with Aloe Herbs and Rose Water. I've got a thing for rose. I just like the scent of rose a lot. I actually was burning a rose candle most of today. And this facial, these facial sprays, they're affordable, but like I feel like they don't really do anything when it comes to like my skincare. Honestly, I used one of these like in the middle of the day, just like refresh like my makeup and it felt really nice. But as a part of my skincare routine, I don't think it does much. If anything, I might start buying like these because um, I do like to use two setting sprays for my makeup. So I might, since this is pretty affordable, start using this for that. I've got one that's almost empty in my bathroom right now because I'm still using it as part of my skincare, but yeah, I feel like it doesn't do much. And Brooke asked, what are they supposed to do? Honestly, 
let's let's read the directions. The directions say, mist before moisturizer for added hydration throughout the day to revive and refresh skin, or after makeup application to give skin a dewy finish. So it's doesn't really have any uh, skincare benefits touted or anything, but a lot of people had this in their routine. But uh, I don't feel like it does anything specifically that I can see for my skincare. But it does feel like a nice setting spray. So I might just take what I have in my bathroom right now and just use it for that instead. All right, let's see. I've got a couple of serums. Moisturizers will go last. Well, let's do this face mask first because I just finished this last night. This is my favorite like face mask Ever. I've been using this for years. I've bought who knows how many. This is from Lush, and this is the Brazened Honey Fresh Face Mask. I I can break out every now and then. Um, I tend to get really bad recurring breakouts right on the tip of my nose, and then like down here on my chin. This is the only thing that helps get rid of those, legitimately. And oh, it's so good, especially because Lush has their recycling program where if you use a few of their products and you bring back the containers that are clean, like you gotta clean it out. But once you clean them out and you can return it and you can get a free one of these. <laughs> so I always go back and keep getting the same face mask. And uh, I love it. the first thing I'm gonna do, one of the first things I'm gonna do after like this is kind of hopefully all over is like go pick, go on a shopping spree. <laughs> Because I also, I don't know if you can see, so behind me, those are all Lush containers that are empty because I've used the products up. So there's like four back there. And this makes five. I think you need five to get a free face mask. But I love this face mask. It smells amazing. It's nice and thick. You don't have to do your whole face. I finished this up by doing a full face, but really I use this to just target wherever I'm breaking out. And it works like a treat. Like next morning I wake up and it's Whatever breakout I had is really reduced and just, it goes away after just a couple of days if I use this. I love this mask so much. So um, for the majority of like my empties, I recycle the products uh, just in our regular recycling, but not. For MAC and for Lush, make sure you clean the containers out and then bring them back to the stores because you get free product. Those are the two that I know of. I don't know of any other company that also does that, but just so you know. Because I think I had a friend who like recycled all hers and I was like, no, you should bring them back to the store and get the free face mask because they're such good face masks. They really are. The Brazen Honey is my favorite, but they have a bunch of other ones too, if that one's just not your thing. And that's hair care. All right, serum time. I've got so many serums here. Where to start? Let's talk. Okay, I've got a few products from Rail Beauty. R A E L. These were graciously gifted to me through influencers. So these were sent in PR. I got three products from the brand. This is the Creamy Moisture Mist. So this is actually very similar to the um, Mario Badescu spray. So there's like a little bit left in here that I couldn't quite get out. Let's see. Is it going to spray? Uh, uh. You know when you get to the very bottom of a spray bottle and it starts just, like, attacking you? That's what this is. But I felt the way about this the same way I did about the Mario Badescu spray. Like, I couldn't tell. I didn't see any difference in my skin just from this product. And I think it's too pricey for what it is. Because I think this is, like, 20-something dollars for the face spray. It's one thing if it's Mario Badescu and it's only $8 a bottle and it lasts forever, and it smells good, and you like it. It's another thing to spend the same thing, but spend 20-something dollars. It's something that I can't really see the effects of. So this one was just kind of a mad product. Hi, Melissa. Oh, happy to have you. Ah. Okay, so the other two products I got from Rail, I actually liked both of these, but I do think they are a bit pricey for what they are. The first one is the Advanced Antioxidant Serum, which I put these back in the packaging. They're all mostly empty, but I put them back in the packaging because I love this packaging. It's so pretty. So this is empty because I used up the entire thing. This is the Advanced Antioxidant Serum, and I, for the duration of my testing this skincare line, I stopped using every other skincare product. I used just these for like three weeks straight. I actually really like the serum. It took the place of my retinol at night. It took the place of my vitamin C in the morning. And I really didn't see a big difference in my skin. Like 
it still stayed pretty good with the exception of like some of the minor breakouts. But really those have been happening in like the past two weeks. And I used this like over a month ago. So I don't think this, you could really attribute my current breakouts to this, but mm, this was actually really good. I think it was um, described as being a very glowy, like I, when I saw the description, I thought this was trying to be kind of like a vitamin C serum, but using it morning and night, it went kind of fast because I did finish this whole thing up in less than three weeks, morning and night. So I would say this is probably best to use just once a day instead. But overall, it was actually a really good serum. And I liked the the way it um, sank into my skin, the way it played with my other skincare. It was just really good. So there's that one. And last but not least, we have the moisturizer. So they call their moisturizer this is the Nourishing Gel Cream. So it's this actually reminded me a lot of, I'm comparing a lot. This reminded me a lot of the Clinique moisturizer. I've got a couple of Clinique things down here, but it's like that yellow moisturizer, you know? This reminded me a lot of that. This I don't think, this actually might be around the same price as the Clinique, but you get more product with the Clinique. I liked this moisturizer. It was nice and light, but it didn't sink in too fast into my skin and make me feel dry after a couple of hours. It was light in a nice way. <laughs> And it worked really well under makeup. It worked really well overnight. And I just, I really liked the moisturizer. Only downside is that this packaging, while gorgeous, it's hard. Like, there's a little bit left in here that I just can't get out. Even though I tried scooping it out, it's, it's not coming out. <laughs> just not. So, I'd say overall, A plus in the packaging. Um, except for the sprayer nozzle on the, um, on the, on the spray. Because that was actually pretty trash. <laughs> I, I had to figure out a way to like tilt it to make it actually spray right on my face. Uh, but I'm just being picky. All right, let's see. Other moisturizers. We can go ahead and just talk real quick about these two products from The Ordinary. This first one is the Caffeine Solution. I use this every day, morning and night. I use this just right under my eyes and then right on the tip of my eyelids. But not, like, you have to be very careful. Don't get it in your eye, because it will burn the crap out of you <laughs> if you actually get it in your eye. But this is really good. I, can, I feel it depuffing my eyes as I put it on. And it's... I don't know if it's, like, over long term has helped try to like lessen my fine lines. I do have fine lines on my under eyes, but I, I feel the actual difference almost immediately with how puffy my eyes feel in the morning. And it feels really nice and relaxing at night. So I love this. I will never be without this. It's like $8 a bottle. Ah, the caffeine solution is the best. Next from The Ordinary, I have one of their, um, what is it? least of not at least effective but medium effective vitamin c's this is the asorb oh, i'm gonna try and pronounce this asorbyl glucoside solution 12 percent, which is a brightening serum with stabilized vitamin c derivatives so i looked at their chart uh i put it up in another video of mine but they have a chart of all their vitamin c like derivatives and how uh what their texture is and then how effective they are like if it's like light medium or heavy so what I did is when I purchased these for the first time, I bought one of each. I bought one light, one medium, and one heavy. This is the medium one. So I used the entirety of the light vitamin C derivative first, and then I went in with this medium one. This, the light one, in my last empties video, I mentioned that I really didn't see a whole difference. I had used some vitamin C in the past, but I felt like the first one, the lowest level, it just wasn't really effective enough. This is the first one, this 12% solution, where I actually saw a difference and felt a little bit of a difference. It really brightened. It would give me a nice glow after I put this on, and I feel like it just worked really well with the rest of my skincare routine. Now that I finished this, I moved on to one of the biggest uh, percentages of the vitamin C derivative, and that packs a punch. It is strong, but in a good way. But I feel like I couldn't have just jumped in and started with that strongest vitamin C. I don't. I feel like I probably would have burnt my skin off if I did that. So that's why I'm glad I bought the light. Uh, basically, I built myself up to that strong vitamin C. So moving forward, I'll probably just buy that stronger vitamin C. I don't think I'll ever have to go back to either of these. Um, 
but they worked well. They served their purpose. There we go. They served their purpose. I was able to get through, build up to the stronger vitamin C, and that's what I'm hoping to stay using. <laughs> I only have one bottle. I just started using it a couple weeks ago. I have one bottle, and once that's gone, I don't know, because I was buying these from Ulta before, either Ulta or Sephora, so I might have to place an online order, but I, I'm trying to avoid that just because I don't want to tie up resources buying things that aren't 100% like necessary right now. But we'll see how long that lasts me. <laughs> oh my god, we're 20 minutes in, and I'm not even done with the first section of these empties. <laughs> Well, we're almost done with skincare. We've got a few more products and a couple of minis. We can go through those pretty quickly. So next I have this kind of random rose hip seed oil. I picked this up at TJ Maxx a while ago. I have to say this is not as I, I think pure or as effective as the ordinary. This is from Olivia Care. 100% natural rose hip oil face serum. See, this also says it has vitamins A, C, and omega-6. So I think the one from The Ordinary is like pure rose hip seed oil, which is what I love to use at night. Every night I mix it with my moisturizer before I put it on. And that one, now that we're talking about it, really evens out my complexion. It really helped fade my red spots from acne, and it just it works so well. I'm moisturizing my skin too. This one I was hoping would be a cheaper version of that ordinary one, but it's not. Honestly, I've tried a couple other ones too. Nothing compares to the one from The Ordinary. It's affordable. It's effective. Yeah, you can't beat it. So I tried to find something else that worked, and it didn't. I did use this whole bottle up. I think I bought two of them, so I probably have another one of these in my backup drawer. But I don't know. I might just use it on my hands. This, is, this isn't a bad moisturizer. Next, we have one of my favorite retinol serums. This is from CeraVe, once again. And this is the Skin Renewing Retinol Serum. I love this. They did change the packaging. So you see this is like a plastic kind of tube thing. It used to come in a squeezy tube. And... Um, I used to be able to find it at like CVS or Target. I think they just changed the packaging because like it went out of stock everywhere for a while and then I saw it again and it was this new packaging. I think I bought this one off of Amazon a few weeks ago and it came in a pack of two. So I've got this one that's empty and I have one that's open right now that I use every night in my nighttime skincare routine. This I found really helped um, prevent breakouts back, back in the day when I was using my Luna sleeping oil from Sunday Riley, which was hella expensive, uh, and I could not afford to keep using that. This was, or basically the product that came before this and the other packaging was what I found that could dupe that Luna sleeping oil. So that's why I stuck with it. And I don't see a huge difference between this and the old packaging, other than I think the older packaging had more product. I think this runs out of product quicker. Let's see, Melissa said, I didn't know rose hip seed oil reduced redness on acne scars. I'll have to try it. Yeah, totally. I found out um, from the Tayla. She is a huge fan of that oil and she used it right after she was finished with Accutane to help with her redness and her acne scars. And Brooke said, after all that hand washing, yeah, constantly washing the hands. You got to make sure you moisturize. I yielded my boyfriend for this. I don't know if he's in the chat he likes to jump in on live streams sometimes but he he's working right now in a grocery store and he's constantly washing his hands but he's not moisturizing which is dangerous because if your skin breaks and like you have open cuts that's even more dangerous. like it doesn't matter how much you wash your hands if you get in touch with something like you've got open wounds on your hands so make sure please this isn't just like a vanity thing like at least at the bare minimum moisturize your hands a little bit if you're constantly washing them because if you get uh like crack hands. I used to have hands that were so dry in high school that like my knuckles would crack and split. Moisturize, please. For the love of all that is holy, moisturize your hands a little bit after you wash them. Just a little. <sighs> all right, stepping off of my soapbox. <laughs> we're almost done with skincare. All right, next. I actually, so this product I've had in my pantry, not pantry, in my linen closet. We keep a lot of our backup like, uh, 
beauty products in our linen closet. This has been in there for a long time. <laughs> this is the Clinique Moisture Surge Overnight Mask. I don't remember, I think I got this as a gift a Christmas or two ago, and it's really thick mask, essentially. You can use it as a moisturizer if you thin it out a little bit, but really, it's a really thick overnight mask. And I would really use this just in my super dry areas. I would say this more, and not maybe not in the summer, but like in midwinter, normally after it snowed. We actually did not, here in New Jersey, we didn't have like a really bad winter this year. Like normally after it snowed and I had to go out and like shovel and you would get like, I don't know, freezer burn? Is that the, not really that's the right word. <laughs> but like when it was so dry, um, because of the cold. Like this is what I would like to use like right after like I showered after like shoveling snow or something. Cause it was just really thick and it stayed on your face and it moisturized and it worked really well. And if you had certain dry spots, you put this on overnight in the morning, it, it would be 10 times better. So this isn't something I would use like every day. I would recommend this if you have like really dry skin, really dry skin. Cause if you have, Oily skin, stay far away. This isn't going to help you. If you have combo skin, it's going to last forever and you, you'll use it only in spots. But it's still a decent product. Honestly, like, the packaging is actually, like, worn off because we've had this for so long. Uh. Oh, and here we go. So, actually, this is a mini of that same product. <laughs> so, we've got the, the actual size and then the mini. I think I got this in another kit as a gift. <laughs> But, um, I have so story time, not story time, but like sidebar. I had in my makeup, my makeup, my skincare backup kind of drawer, I had a whole bunch of mini products I was saving for traveling, which, yeah, we're not doing that <laughs> for the foreseeable future, you know? Um, so I've been trying to work through like my minis that I was saving for traveling because skincare can go bad and I didn't want it to go bad. So I've got this mini that I used up, which is basically just the same product as this. And I also had this mini from Caudalie. And this is the Vino Source Moisturizing Sorb. It's, just, it's a fancy moisturizer. It's all it is. Pretty sure I got this as, was this like the Sephora birthday gift one year? I had it for forever and I saved it for traveling and we're not traveling. So I just used it up. It was a bit uh, over um, scented. Yeah, oof, it smells like old lady perfume. So I wasn't a huge fan, but I did use it up. That's about all I can say about it. And let's see. I think the last thing I have is technically a body care item. But what did I drop? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so the last skincare body care item I have is a moisturizer, speaking of moisturizing, from Burberry. So uh, my favorite perfume is from Burberry and it's the My Burberry Blush. It's the pink one. It's adorable. I love it. And I get, I'm trying to say, I bought a tiny, tiny one for myself a while ago. And then my grandma got me the full size kit of it for like my birthday and Christmas one year as a nice gift. And it came with like the perfume and the lotion. This is super scented. Like so strong, like, ten, like so much stronger than just the perfume but it smells good. It's not the most moisturizing. You do have to like reapply this more often than you do a regular lotion, but this isn't really made for moisturizing, I don't think. It's really made more for the scent, so you get the Burberry scent, and it does last for forever. <laughs> Even though your, your hands might not feel as moisturized, you still smell it, <laughs> and it is a nice scent. So I did use this up recently just because I've been home washing my hands a lot, going through lotion <laughs> darn near constantly. Um, and I was saving this because I like saving my expensive perfumes and stuff. But I was like, nope, now's the time to use it. So I used it. I'm glad I did. I enjoyed it. And now it's time to recycle it. <laughs> I still have the perfume, though. I, I ration my Burberry perfume because I don't want it to, like, run out. <laughs> so I still have, um, I want to say, like, three-fourths of a bottle full of the perfume itself. <sighs> Brooke said, I like Burberry. Their perfumes are really nice. I have to agree. Yeah. There's only like, I think two or three perfumes. I don't have a huge perfume collection. I still use like the, the body spray from Bath and Body Works for all, as my day-to-day -day kind of perfume thing. But uh, Burberry does have really nice perfumes. And so does, um, 
I think it's called Juliet Has a Gun, I think is the brand. They have this perfume called Not a Perfume. And, oh, I love that. It's, it's way too expensive though. It's, I think, even more expensive than the Burberry. So I don't buy perfumes. Normally I get them as gifts. Um, I've got like two nice perfumes. I got the Burberry and I think I have a Tom Ford. And they're both birthday gifts two years in a row. And that's my whole perfume collection. Other than that, I'm using like cheap body sprays. So I think that was everything body care. I've got one perfume here, a body spray, and then I've got some hair care. So let's do that. Let me try to reorganize my battle station here. And I should probably pick up the makeup thing that I dropped earlier. Makeup, makeup. Yeah, we got a lot of makeup for this one. Ooh, basket. And makeup. Can I reach it with- I can't reach it with my foot. Hold on a second. <laughs> and we found the Rogue Primer. Okay, so... Before we move to hair care, um... I guess this could be a random. I've had this for forever, too. This is from uh, Bath & Body Works, and this is a pillow mist. So it's like a room perfumer. And this is the Stress Relief Eucalyptus and and spearmint. Spearmint. Oof. It's a very light room spray and this lasted me like a year because <laughs> I would only use a little bit. I tend to use it on my fabrics, like a little bit on the curtains, a little bit on the bed, and it just like before I've got to say, so before this COVID stuff happened, I didn't really like scents as much. <laughs> There's something about being stuck in the same room for a month, nearly over a month now, that really makes me appreciate scents more. I've been using Febreze. I've been using this. I've been using my uh, cheaper <laughs> perfumes and sprays. I have been obsessed with candles. I don't know what it is now that I'm just like obsessed with candles, but um, it was the situation that finally got me to finish this because it had been like half full for like six months <laughs> and I just wasn't using it that often because I wasn't spending as much time in my room before. <laughs> so yeah, I liked it. I honestly, like I got this over a year ago. I forgot how much it cost or what I had to pay for it, but it was a really nice spray. I just had to spray a lot of it because like I said, it was a, it was a light, a light, very light scent. Ooh, Marta said, perfumes are so expensive, I always wait for my birthday and Christmas to ask for a perfume. Yep, exactly. That's exactly like all my family. They either get me hair care or they get me a perfume or a makeup gift card. That's basically like everyone's go-to gifts for Monica. And it's even more so because uh, if you didn't know, my birthday and Christmas are the same week. <laughs> my birthday is December 22nd. Christmas is December 25th. So like I only get gifts during that one week time span. <laughs> Speaking of perfume, this perfume was a gift from my grandma. She still buys um, she still buys uh, Avon from a friend of hers. So this is from Avon. This is the Haiku Reflection perfume. It smells really good. I don't know what it is about these Haiku perfumes that are just really good. I do feel a way about Avon being an MLM but I'm never buying these. I never actually buy them. They always just get gift, like gifted to me. So yeah, I'm not a fan of a, I'm not a fan of MLMs, but I really do like this perfume. It smells good. Oh, Marta said, oh no way, me too. Is your birthday that week in December? There are a few, you know, um, my boyfriend actually, his boy, his, his boyfriend, his birthday is December 18th. I'm the 22nd, and then we've got Christmas. <laughs> There's like so much in that one week, it drives our families nuts. All right, so hair care. I've got four products here. The first is a product I talked about a while ago. This was sent to me in PR a long time ago, and I kind of, um, trying to say. I didn't use this every time I shampooed because it could uh, dry my hair out, but I loved the way it felt on my scalp. This is from Organics. This is the Tea Tree and Mint Shampoo. This felt so nice and tingly on my scalp. I loved it. It felt like ASMR on my scalp, but it did dry out my hair. 
So I did have to space out. I think I would use this at max once or twice a month. Otherwise it would dry me. And I only wash my hair once or twice a week. So every like fourth or fifth wash, I would use this. And it smelled really good too. <sighs> Just smells like peppermint. So nice. But uh, I think this was a bit pricey for what it retails as. I think on their website, it's more expensive than on like Amazon. So if you're interested, pick it up on Amazon instead. And I think Amazon also had like clippable coupons you could use instead. Uh, but it's it's a decent shampoo. I don't know if I'll go out and buy it just because I have a lot of hair care. And I didn't use this often enough to really justify it. Next, a product that I purchased that I am 100% going to purchase again once, you know, things kind of sort of go back to normal. I, I don't feel bad about buying things that aren't 100% necessary. This is from Head & Shoulders, and this is the Royal Oils Instant Soothe Scalp Elixir. So this is actually like a little spray. You would spray onto your scalp, and it would, um, for me, it felt like a, uh, a better dry shampoo. But what it did is it really soothed, like it says in the title, the itchy or dry parts of your scalp and it worked so well i loved i loved the scent what is the scent i can't even like it smells almost like apples is that what it smells like i don't know oh it says cooling menthol and peppermint oil i don't know why i thought it smelled like apples but this was just so good. I did go through this kind of quickly, but I used this every time I washed my hair. I would just part my hair like all around the top of my scalp and just spray down the parts. And it actually like tingled the whole time I had it on. It felt really good. And if there's any time in between washes where my scalp felt itchy, instead of itching it or like patting it down, I would just grab this and spray it on the spot, immediately went away. And overall, my scalp health is so much better right now. But I really think that's because I stopped using Diva Curl. So once this is uh, processed and up, I will throw up in the cards the last live stream I did about Diva Curl because I talk a little bit more in depth there about my hair routine and my scalp and the history of my scalp problems. And the fact that it, allegedly my experience Diva Curl don't sue me, but the minute I stopped using all my Diva Curl products... I, my scalp just got better. So say what you want. I was using this before and after I stopped using Diva Curl, and I still liked it. So I definitely want to rebuy this, but not right now. <laughs> Next, we have a conditioner. This was actually a gift for, ooh, it's matching my eyeshadow. But this was a gift that my aunt gave me for Christmas last year, and this is the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk 3-in-1 Conditioner. This was a great conditioner. Only downside is the packaging. Uh, this conditioner is so thick that it would clog the pump. So it was kind of annoying having to, like, I don't know if I can actually, like, pop. No, it won't do it because it's empty. But uh, each time I pumped it down, it would take a full 10 seconds to come back up. So if you're in the shower and you want to just get three pumps for your hair, it's pump. Pump. It would take that long. So I'm an impatient little shit and I didn't like waiting all that time. So eventually I just started unscrewing this and just pouring it out onto my hand. But even then that was tough too because it's thick, thick shampoo. Not shampoo, conditioner, excuse me. It's a thick conditioner, but it was a good conditioner. It was really moisturizing, and I like leaving a little bit of this in my hair as I dried, um, just to leave, like, the ends a bit more moisturized as I went to style, but uh, this was really good. I actually have another one. She gave me a deep conditioner and then two of these bottles. So I have the second bottle now open in my shower because <laughs> it's really good. Only downside, I, have, I really wish this, I don't think this packaging is right for this conditioner. I think this should have come in a tub, like this, because it's just so hard trying to get this out through the pump. If it came in a tub, it'd be so much more accessible and easier to use. Just saying. And last but not least for hair care, we have like one of my favorite gels, but unfortunately it's like one of the hardest things to find, because this was purchased at Marshall's. This is the Dippity Do Girls with Curls Defrizz Light Hold Jelly. I used 
this whole thing up. <sighs> and well, A, it smells delightful. B, this was some of the best, like, plumping gel I've used. Like, today, I have a decent hair day, but like you can see in some parts, my hair looks a little stringy. When I used this, my curls would look, every curl would look like this. Nice and plump and curled. I love this stuff. I have one more of these in my like backup drawer, but I'm currently testing out some other hair care products that were sent to me through Influencer, so I'm holding off. And I'm also saving it because I don't know when I'm going to get another one. <laughs> I really don't know when I'm going to get another one. But that being said, this is affordable when you can find it. This is $5.99 at Marshalls, and I love the tub. Like, I think more gels should come in a tub because it's easier just to open it up, dip my little hands in as I'm styling my hair because it takes a while to style. <laughs> and it just, oh, man, I love this gel. You can buy this on Amazon or from their website, but it's like three times the price. So I would just recommend if at any point in the future when we can go back to shopping if you happen to see this on your shelf at Marshalls or TJ Maxx and you've got any type of curly hair pick it up. I don't think you'll regret it. Oof. Alright, I think it's time to move on to our last section which is all of the makeup. Oof. We've been going at this for a bit and we've got a lot of makeup in here. Man, there's more makeup than I thought. Okay. All right, here we go. Trying to stay organized, cleaning up as we go. Rice and honey. Okay. You're all concealers, setting spray, face powder, primer. What is this? Lip balm. Okay. So let's start with some primers. The first is a primer I've already waxed poetic on for probably a year at this point. This is the Elf Poreless Putty Primer. I love this primer. And it's affordable. It works better than the Tatcha primer. Ah. I actually, I cannot wait for them to dupe Elf, to dupe the new liquid skin canvas, because I would try it from Elf. Now that I know that this Elf one worked better than Tatcha, I don't want to buy the Tatcha one because it's expensive. <laughs> it's like 50 something dollars, if that. But this is such a great primer. I picked up the other two versions of this, the matte one and the luminous one. The luminous one is okay, but not really what I'm 100% looking for, and I can't really test the matte one until summer, because that's when I need every matte product under the sun. <laughs> literally. Literally. <laughs> but I just love this. I think I've got, I've gone through two full size of these at this point, and then I have one more in my primer drawer that is currently opening, that's currently open that I use. Um, but this, oh, it's a great primer. I don't think it's sold out again anymore. I mean, back when, like, what was it, Jeffree Star released his video, it was sold out everywhere. You couldn't get your hands on it for, like, three months. But now, it's great. Speaking of poor primers, oh my god, most of these are poor primers. <laughs> Speaking of poor primers, this one is from Revlon. And this is the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. This one is actually a decent primer. But I got a couple of bones to pick with it. First of all, the packaging is kind of a pain in the butt. I don't like this pump. It's bulky. I don't like that I can't really take everything. I had to, like, pop off the lid. You can't just unscrew it. Because if you unscrew it, it does that. <laughs> so it's not easy if you're trying to pan this. You got to, like, literally pop the top off and then scrape it out. Even then, there's still a little bit left in here. I can't, like, finish the whole thing up. That aside, this is actually a really good pore primer. And not just for like where you think you have the most issues with pores. I use this all over my face and it just worked really well as an all over primer. This lasted me a long time, but I do have a lot of other primers that I move between and shake things up by changing primers. And overall, I think this was a bit pricey. This is closer to like $15, $16 at the drugstore. I don't want to recommend this over the e.l.f. one 
because the elf pore primer is 100 it's like definitely better and it's cheaper this one i would say i would say this is really only worth it if you can get a coupon and get it under 10 bucks then it'll last you a good long time. It's a good primer. This one's more liquidy. I know it looks kind of like the Teletubby, what is it, the putty stuff that's all over. Uh, this is a more um, liquidy version as opposed to the e.l.f. one, which is definitely a more um, malleable putty. <laughs> uh, so if, if you have a big thing about texture, maybe you'll like this one better. But overall, I'm just glad I finished it up. I would never choose this over the e.l.f. one, though. Do with that info what you will. Speaking of pore primers, let's throw in another pore primer. This is the Pores No More Luminizer Primer from Dr. Brandt. This one, okay, so the first full-size one of this that I got was from BoxyCharm, and I loved it. But it was hella, this is like 30-something dollars for a pore primer, which you don't need to do. I only got this second one because back when I canceled BoxyCharm, I had to use up all of my points, and all of my points were enough to get a full-size version of this for free. <laughs> so I did it, and I finally finished it up. It's a great primer, but I just can't justify that price. It's way too expensive. Uh, do I like this better than the e.l.f. one? Maybe. Uh, I, they might be neck and neck, because this one is definitely, it says it's a luminizing primer, this is, as ridiculous as it may sound, it does reduce my pores, and it's luminizing. But not in a bad way. Like, it, this just worked so well. But I would never actually spend 30-something whatever dollars of my own money to buy this. I only really got it again because of the points. So, yes. I think the moral of the story is just stick with the elf. <laughs> All right, next, I've got a Mini Mac Fix Plus. I really like Fix Plus. I like buying it on sale or in these mini sets you can get right around the holidays. This was the lavender scent. I love their scents. <laughs> my favorite, of course, is the rose. I love anything scented rose. It's just one of my favorites. But the lavender one was also really good. The only downside is that if you get these minis, you can't do the back to Mac programs or the recycling program. They won't take the minis. So you do, you should recycle these in the way that you or your township handles recycling. And uh, yes, the only downside is if you buy the minis, even if they're affordable and in a pack of three, you can't recycle them. You can't recycle them back to Mac to get a free eyeshadow or lipstick. You just have to recycle them on your own. Oh, Kay said, good morning from South Korea. I'm glad I got to join your live stream. Ah, good morning to you. I'm so glad you're able to join. Uh, Marta said, what about the e.l.f. illuminizing one? Okay, so that one, I'm trying to put it like in perspective of the other primers we just went through. Let me grab it. I think it's right here. Do, do, do. Here we go. Okay, so this is the illuminizing version. I've used quite a bit of it. So I would say this one, whereas the, the Dr. Brandt Pores No More looks good all over my face, with this um, e.l.f. one, I have to be strategic about where I put it as a primer. This doesn't look the best here. Like it tends to like kind of look a bit odd and shiny under my foundation, whereas like the Dr. Brandt or the other um, regular putty one looks fine here. So for this, I feel like this is more of a luminizing primer and less of a pour primer. Whereas this is kind of, I don't know if this one was marketed as such, but I kind of assumed that since they're all in the same line that they were all supposed to be pour minimizing plus whatever it said that they were also doing. So I assumed this meant pour reducing and luminizing like the Dr. Brand. I think the Dr. Branch does better than this because this definitely, it, trying, how do I explain this? <laughs> it doesn't reduce my pores so much as it just really, really brightens under makeup. So if I'm looking for this kind of a luminizing agent, 
under my makeup, I would strategically place it where I want highlight. So like up here, over here. It doesn't look that great where I want a pore reducing primer right here. So yeah. That was a long tangent, but I hope that helped a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's see. I've got two empty powders here, both from uh, Shop Miss A, the AOA Studio Perfect Finishing Pressed Powder, and they're both in the shade Ivory. I just really like this powder. It's a dollar. It lasts a good long time, and um, it represses really easily. So once I get to the, I don't have one that I have pan on right now because I used both of them up, but once I hit pan in the middle of this powder, it is so easy to just repress it into the middle of the pan so I can really use up all of it. Excuse me while I break it. But it, it's just so easy to repress so I can get my money's worth, even if it's only a dollar, out of this powder. And it's such a good powder. I, um mentioned in a previous video that I had a Shop Miss A package get lost and that customer service gave me my credit back. So I did replace my order. I'm not going to get it for like at least a month. <laughs> I know that. But um, I did want to get more of these and more of the loose powder. The loose powder is awesome too from Shop Miss A. Speaking of loose powder, I have one loose powder empty and this is from, ooh, Excuse me. That's what I get for drinking soda. I really don't drink soda that often, so excuse me. <sighs> so, this setting powder, this is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. I have the shade 5. I used to be able to use the shade 10 or 15, but I am now pale as hell. <laughs> so, no, I cannot. Uh, this works really well. My only downside to this is... One of the plus sides is the packaging. I love the way that this is with the square and then you get the circle opening. I just wish you could remove the sifter because there's a little bit of powder left in there. I just can't get it out. And I'm not about to like attack this with a knife and like hurt myself just to get the rest of that powder out. So I, if, if this could be removed and I could just get into the powder, this would be the, the, the world's most perfect loose powder. Just forget it, the rest can go home. <laughs> just because it's so good. I love this for under my eyes and for all over my face. And I have pretty dry under eyes down here. It's the driest spot on my face. And this works really well for my under eyes. I saw Kay ask the question, I have dry under eyes. Do you have any recommendations for setting powders? My favorites, I do have pretty dry under eyes. And I do have fine lines too. My favorites are this one from uh, Maybelline. I also love the Shop Miss A, that loose powder. Awesome. And um, what is the other? <laughs> if you're feeling fancy. I have one really expensive recommendation, and that's the Natasha Denona loose powder. That was such an amazing loose powder, but it's so expensive. <laughs> it's way too expensive. So if you're looking for affordable Maybelline or Shop Miss A, if you want to splurge a little bit, Natasha Denona. I'll see, if Brooke is still on the call, Brooke was there when I bought the Natasha Denona one. That was when we had like our girls weekend, and we went to Sephora, and we bought that powder. I love that powder so much. Alrighty. I've got a mini here. Oh, Brooke said I was going to say. <laughs> yes. We actually, that video is still on my channel. Brooke and I, if you want to see me and my best friend do a drunk Sephora haul, once this is processed, I will put that up in the cards. But if you want to just go to my channel and search like, like drunk Sephora haul, where it, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I think that powder is in that haul. <laughs> so real quick, this is a lip balm from Kiehl's. I'm pretty sure this was just a point perk or something from Sephora. I actually didn't like this. It didn't moisturize my lips. It... I don't know. It was it was greasy. It wasn't like a good lip balm, so nope. Kay said, is it the Invisible HD face powder? Yep, that's the one. That's, oh, it was so good. I forgot actually how much it cost, but that's that's the one of the best powders I've ever tried. Okay, so should I do concealers or foundations first? I've got three of each. Well, let's do this last product, which is the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. Oh, I love this brow gel. It's the closest I have found to an affordable dupe of the ABH Clear Brow Gel. 
Oh, it's so good. This, I love the spoolie. It's a little big, but like now that I'm growing out my brows, it's not as big <laughs> as it was. And the formula is really good. I love that you can't see through the bottle because I have got dark brows and I use dark brow products and my brow gel can look pretty nasty <laughs> after a while of using black products in my brows. <laughs> so I just really like this product. It's affordable. I've got, this is the one I'm currently using right now that's open. This is the empty one. I like to rotate these out like I would any other eye product. Um, like three months-ish. And I like to buy these, oh, I'm trying to think, is it still open? My local mall, back when I could shop, has a NYX store. It's a huge store full of just NYX products. And whenever I go, I like to pick up like one or two just to keep as backups. They're nice to have. They're affordable and they keep everything locked in. These brows are not going anywhere. All right, let's do, let's switch it up. I'll do, cons we'll do foundations first. And then we'll go into my concealers. We only have six products left. Not bad. Not to, about almost an hour in. <laughs> almost done. Alrighty. The first foundation that I finished up was one of the only ones that is too light for me. Yes, it apparently exists. There was a foundation too light for me. And this is from Makeup Revolution. This was the Conceal and Hydrate Radiance Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid. I really liked this. I think the main problem was that it was too light for me. And I think, I'm trying to think, it did not mix well with certain concealers. So that's why I, I dug into this and started to use it to mix up with other foundations since I've been in quarantine. And I used it up fairly quickly. <laughs> Overall, I don't like this as much as I liked the other foundation that I got from Makeup Revolution. The the stick foundation, the fast base stick foundation is so good. I love that foundation so much. So I'm glad I tried this out. I'm glad to know that they have such a great shade range that there are things way too light for me. And they've got they've got a really good shade range, I have to say. They do a really good job for shade range. Uh, but I would not buy this again. I would instead buy their stick foundation because I love the hell out of their stick foundation. And this one was just like okay all right next we have a foundation that i was really just mad about i didn't like this wearing it when i left when i actually went to the office and had to do a full day and even here in the house sitting around all day if i used this by itself it didn't look good i had to mix it with other foundations to make it work even just sitting around my house and that's the wet and wild photo focus dewy foundation and like i said it was just okay it smells better than the first one. You guys remember when that first foundation came out and everyone said it smelled like paint thinner? Yeah, I kind of, I wish that there was like a foundation from Wet n Wild that I liked, but I've tried so many of them. There were just some affordable brands that for me, their foundations don't work. Like e.l.f. That's not a single foundation from e.l.f. has worked for me. Same with Wet n Wild. They're just, eh, they're not the best. There are some amazing affordable foundations out there. And it's great that since they're affordable, you can go out and try them, but it's, yeah, it's a shame, but none of these foundations from Wet n Wild have worked for me. Last and certainly not least, we have this Milani foundation that I finished up, and this is the Screen Queen Natural Finish Foundation in the shade 120. So this by itself was a little dark for me. I used this up by mixing it not only with the Wet n Wild, but also with a really old foundation. I had the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation that I would mix in with that. And it actually worked really well. <laughs> and I'm not worried about matching to like my neck or to my skin tone because I'm just home. And here you can see it because my chest is getting a little bit red, but like at work, in my work clothes, in my crappy work laptop because the webcam isn't as good there. You can't tell the difference in my skin tone. So I'm trying to use up everything that doesn't match me right now. And yeah, I mean, it was decent. I found a way to make this work for me, but it was kind of high maintenance. Not exactly what I'm looking for in an affordable foundation, but not overall a bad foundation. And I don't know about the claims that it filters like blue light. I don't know anything. But I'm glad I was able to use up both of those foundations because they were newer to my collection. Neither of them I loved, 
but I'm glad that I had the time and I experimented and tried different things and actually finished both of them. I felt so accomplished after I finished both. All right, we just have three concealers left and then we're done. Oof. Well, technically one is an eye primer, excuse me. So let's start with that one. This is the, again, Makeup Revolution Cut to Crease Canvas. Now, this um, was advertised as a way to help you do a cut crease. I think this brush, just for like my eye shape and like my eye size, I think it wasn't the best for that. But the actual product in here was a great eye primer. <laughs> I used the heck out of this. Before this, I panned one in my skin tone. So I used a whole nother one in my skin tone and I used this one in white. This white one was fantastic as a base for colorful looks. If you use this as a base and then set it with a white eyeshadow and then went in with your bright colors, it looked amazing and it lasted all day, even on my hooded lids. So I like, I would definitely buy one of these again. It lasts forever. <laughs> it's got a decent, if you're not using it for cut creases, this is a decent brush to just apply as an eye primer. And I love the formula. I would definitely buy this again. Brooke said blue light for like, blah. Brooke said <laughs> blue light like from computer screens. Yes, that's how it's advertised. It was supposed to help filter the blue light from your smartphone and from your computers and everything. Alrighty. Speaking of panning things and using up things that did not work as well for me, these last two products, these concealers. Now, once upon a time, this Kylie concealer was one of my holy grails. I don't know what it, I don't know why, well, first of all, I don't know why Kylie hasn't come out with a foundation yet. Ugh, I don't know where the boat sailed on that because her concealer is so good. I tried, okay, so that was about a year ago that I loved this concealer. I tried it again recently, and A, the shade is too dark for me because I'm just, I'm Casper. I am custard Casper. I am a yellow Casper. <laughs> I am the yellow Puerto Rican Casper. So the shade didn't work the best. But now that I'm using darker foundations, it didn't matter as much. But I tried this out, I think it was in January. And when I was going to work, working a full day and coming home, my under eyes looked like trash. And I had no idea why. Like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know if it was the foundations it wasn't mixing well with, if it was just my under eyes, if it was the, the, the weather, I don't know. But it suddenly like did not work as well. And I'm so disappointed. Um, I used this again just to finish it up this past month and it worked fine. Again, well, that, means, that being said, I was staying home and working from home and not like leaving my house ever. I have not left my house in a month, <laughs> but it worked, it worked the way I remembered it working. So I loved this concealer. I think it's a bit pricey for what it is, but I have bought, this is like my fourth one. <laughs> it's my fourth Kylie concealer. I would definitely buy this again. I'd have to get a lighter, um, a lighter shade, but I loved this concealer. And I don't know if it was a fluke. I think it was the foundation. Maybe I was using this with a foundation that didn't mix well with it. Cause I like to use this like in the full triangle, maybe a little on the forehead, a little on the chin. But yes, so great, a little bit pricey, but I, I'm probably gonna buy it again. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Kay said, Cuspered Casper, OMG me too, Korean yellow Casper. You know, us, we should be like the, the Casper, like Power Rangers. Like we've got the pink Casper, we've got the red Casper, we've got the yellow Casper. <laughs> oh, we see pink Casper checking in. <laughs> funny thing is too like if you well first of all if you go back to like my first videos on this channel I was tan <laughs> I was dark I was like uh, I don't even know what, uh, like an accurate shade match for I was at least like five shades at least five shades darker than I am now <laughs> just because I tan so I tan at the drop of a hat I actually have an issue where I wear cardigans like to work every day because I'm in my late 20s and that's what I do and I would tan from where the cardigan stopped down. So I would have this weird farmer's tan kind of thing, but it would just be like where my cardigan stopped. 
it was so difficult and like trying to even out a tan just because I tan at the drop of a hat. Oh, oh man, first world problems, huh? <laughs> anyway, our last and final product is here. This is another concealer. I remember, try that again. This is another concealer I remember loving. But first of all, shade didn't match as well, again, because this is the lightest warm shade they had. This is literally, the shade is called Light Warm. And this is, oh, I didn't even say what it is. This is from the Ulta House Beauty Collection. And this is the Full Coverage Liquid Concealer Waterproof. That's what, it's exactly what it says it is. It's a full coverage under eye concealer that I loved so much. And it was so affordable. This is like $3 each. And I just, I, I liked it. And when I first bought this, this was my perfect shade match. That's, that's not my shade right now. But when I first bought this a couple years ago, this was my perfect shade match, and I loved the heck out of this concealer. Now, it's way too dark, but like the Kylie concealer, I, it didn't matter as much because I'm trying to pan other things right now. I also tried this out and about, and it wasn't, I think, maybe again, it might be because the weather was different or because I was trying it with different foundations, but this just didn't work as well as I remembered it working which was odd for me. And it didn't work. I mean, like this was just an okay concealer now, going back to it. I don't know if I'd buy this again, especially because this is literally the lightest shade they have. The shade range on this is not great. So I, I probably won't buy this again. I'd probably go back to one of the other concealers that I know works well for me and I know has a better shade range. So this might be forgotten. This should probably just be in the past. Let's see. Marta said, I wish I tanned. I just burn and look like a lobster. Aww. <laughs> Kay said, my skin refuses to let my paleness go. Went home back to Hawaii and came back as pale as I left. Why? Oh, no. Uh, okay, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but AFEMF, A-F-E-M-F one. Sorry. They said, I have to spend like a week at the beach to tan, and even then I look paper white next to my brother. I used, okay, so the past, I think, year and a half, I have not gone like on a vacation or gone to the beach or anything. I used to be able to like spend one whole day tanning and like get a whole summer tan in one day. But I haven't actually gone to the beach. I live in New Jersey. We have the whole shore. I should be going to the beach, but I didn't last year. And I doubt it's gonna like, happen this year because summer is summer is just canceled <laughs> this year which i'm not mad about honestly like unpopular opinion i like the winter more than the summer yeah i just like cold weather it works better with my hair it works better with my pale skin it works better with me i like the, i like the snow i like the cold i like winter activities <laughs> And you don't have to, like, worry about being tan because you're just all bundled up in coziness. It's the best, honestly. Maybe I'm biased because I'm born in December, but the winter is just... Mwah. All right, so we went through all of my empties. It took a while, but it was fun. And that's about it. That's all I have to talk about right now. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, Kay said, wait, oh, Kay said, I love the winter too. It's so humid here. It's like walking around in the sauna. Oh. My dad lives in North Carolina, and whenever I go to visit, I hate it because it's that's it's humid down there. It's like, oh, it's gross. The summer is too hot, but I prefer spring. And spring is all right. I, I love uh, cherry blossoms. Back when I lived in D.C., I loved going to the Cherry Blossom Festival, and I uh, Apparently, here in New Jersey, there's an area that has just as many cherry blossom trees as D.C., so I love cherry blossoms, but um, I still prefer the winter. Uh, Kay said, don't leave. I have seven more hours at work. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I uh, hope, hope work is not too bad for you, and I'm probably going to wash up and play some Animal Crossing and go to bed. All right. Thank you guys, everyone who could join. Thank you, everyone who voted in the poll to help pick this time. Uh, I think this worked out a lot. I think there were more people on this one. 
So I think 6 p.m. might be a better, or 6 p.m. EST might be a better time if we're going to do this weekdays. I am planning to do another live stream next week. So I'm thinking it might be next Friday. Because what I want to do is a live stream where um, we test out two new eyeshadow palettes that I have um, from Lunatic Cosmetics Labs. So if you didn't Matt, catch this one or if you want to catch my next live stream, it'll be probably next Friday. Don't hold me to that, though. I'm planning for it next Friday uh, for some eyeshadow play. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining. Have a great afternoon, night, morning, noon, <laughs> wherever you are. Bye.